Good morning. It's so good to be standing up here and see a lot of um, people here, especially on this long weekend holiday. And uh, to my surprise, I, would, I thought there wouldn't be as many people as uh, I'm seeing right now. But uh, praise God for all of you who decided to stay here and, and worship with us at Watana Church. And it is always a privilege to be here and uh, to, to share the Word of God. And I, I believe that this morning, the Word of Christ uh, relates to us in, in a very personal way. And I, I believe that if we listen carefully, uh, Christ will reveal and His Holy Spirit will reveal um, the fault or, or the stagnant within our, our relationship. And I, I hope that there, are, there will be something that, that God will speak to you in a very, very personal way this morning. And so this morning, before we uh, begin our, our message, I would like to ask and uh, invite God to be here with us. So let's bow our heads for a minute. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we ask that you would be here with us this morning. Not that you have, you're not here, but we invite ourselves into your presence. And we humble our hearts to listen to your word. Lord, may you speak to us. May you open up our hearts to the very, very deepest, darkest needs in our lives. May you cleanse us and help us to grow more in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this morning, um, I know Watana is a big church, but this morning I, I have a personal admire for people who, who have doctorate degree or, or PhD. I don't know if anyone that are sitting here Actually, anyone, can you, could you please raise your hand if you have a doctor degree or a PhD or some, no? Okay. Well, um, I, I really, really admire people who, who studied or put their effort into studying. I mean, uh, to me, doctor degree or a PhD or a MD, it's sort of like the highest achievement a person could get in their academic life. Now, for me, myself, I, I admire them because my GPA in high school was um, below average. And, and so I, I look up to those who, you know, are smart people. And I, I, I wanted to study. I, I, my parents, both of them have their PhD. Uh, and I'm, I arrived at, at my master's degree, and I want to go to PhD, but I realized that's, that's not what I was called to do. But I admire them because they, they, they put their effort into a point of achievement to the highest achievement for, for their lives. Um, my dad and my mom, they have uh, their PhD uh, in Thai culture. And so they, they could say, with, with boldly, they could say that, I am one of the few people in the world that would have the authority on Thai culture. So uh, the same goes with uh, Olympic athletes, the same goes with uh, the World Guinness Book of Records. The people who have achieved the highest achievements in their lives, um, I really, really admire them. And I, I feel like if you get to that point, there's no more uh, you could do. You, you have. You, you're arrived, and you, you're there, and you've, you've reached that goal. Now, what I've learned to be true, that it is not the same thing as in relationship. Relationship takes growth, and growth comes in two factors. See, um, normally, if it's an organism, it will grow naturally. But in other ways, growth comes with intentionality. Growth comes because you put effort into growing. So this morning, I want to 
go to the, the passage of Scripture, uh, if we could have it on, on the screen. It's from Philippians chapter 3. And if you don't know this about Philippians, and I, I suggest you, if any time in your life you feel down and out, you feel that you're, you know, you're going through tough times, I ask you to go back to the books of Philippians, and I want you to open up and start reading it, because this is written by a guy named, uh, an apostle named Paul, and he's written toward the end of his life. He's about 60 years old, and he's sitting down in, in, in a Roman prison, and he's been prisoners there for about three years, and his whole life of serving God, his scars on his body, and all the things that he's been through, he sat down and he wrote the book of encouragement and the book that is filled with joy. And this is what is written for us this morning. And I want us to, to take a minute to, to look at the, the Word of God. Now, Apostle Paul, he said, not that I have already obtained all this. We don't know yet what all this is. Or have already arrived at my goal, which we have not concluded what his goal is. But I press on to take hold of, what, of which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Well, we'll, we'll find out what it is. But one thing I do, I forget what is behind and strain toward what is ahead, and I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, for us to understand, truly understand this passage of Scripture, we have to go back and realize, what is this it that he's, he's saying? He hasn't obtained it. He hasn't achieved it. He hasn't arrived. He hasn't uh, complete that yet. What is that goal in his life? And we go back one more verse, and I will read from, from my Bible. It says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to resurrection from the dead. So Apostle Paul for all that he has done in his life, all the service that he has given, all the energy that he has put forward toward mission, all the churches that he planted, he's sitting down and he said, look guys, I haven't attained it. I haven't arrived. I am achieved it. I'm sitting here in prison for Christ and I'm saying, I'm still progressing. I'm still growing. It almost reminds me of those uh, Chinese, old Chinese martial arts movie when, when, the, when the, the apprentice comes to the master and asks the master to, to learn from, and the master taught him everything, and uh, the apprentice reads the, the text, and the apprentice practices everything. But one thing that apprentice will never do, because the master's still there, the apprentice has to learn from the master's life. And he will continue to do that, even though he has achieved the, the martial arts, even though he knows how to do this trick. But he will never be able to, and he's learning and he's growing until he becomes the master himself. He, he wants to be like the master. And Apostle Paul saying, all that I have done, all the books that I've read, all the Bible that I've written, I have not arrived. I have not achieved that. Now, this comes from the same man. Listen to this. This comes from the same man who actually has done more than any one of us has done. And he, he wrote this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, are they servants of Christ? Well, I am more. I have worked much harder. I've been in prison more frequently. I've been flogged more severely. I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews of 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rod. Once I was pelt with stone. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day um, in the open sea. I've been 
constantly on the move. I've been in danger from the river, dangers from bandits, dangers from my fellow Jews, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the country, dangers in the sea, dangers from false believers. I have been labored and toiled and have forgot or often gone without sleep. I've been hunger, thirst, and I've got often gone without food. I've been cold, I've been naked, and besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concerns for all the churches. And yet he says, I am still growing. I mean, this is the man that we all of us look up to and we open his text uh, that he wrote through, through uh, the Holy Spirit and we, we do devotions and he said, look, you can't be sitting in church and saying, I've got it. I can't be standing up here preaching the word of God and saying, I've got it. I, I am like Christ now. I'm there. I'm there. I'm, I, I don't have to grow anymore. And it's so easy for us to do so. Apostle Paul said, I, am, I have more. I've been circumcised on the eighth day of all the Israels, of all the tribes of Benjamin, um, Hebrews of Hebrews. Uh, for the law, I'm a Pharisee. For the zealousness, I'm persecutor of the church. For righteousness, I am blameless. And yet, he's still, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. See, this should be our cry in our prayer. Not that, dear God, this is what I want. Dear God, I'm still in need of this. God, I'm so worried about this. Our prayer should be, God, I want to know you more. I want to experience the power of your resurrection. I want to experience the power and the authority that you have called me into. I want to experience experience your life. I want to be more like you. I want to love my enemies. I want to love that person who hates me. I want to be good to those who, who, who do things that persecute me. That should be our cry. I love what Pastor uh, Chuck Swindles, he said, God is seeking people with pro progress and not perfection. And many times we think, you know, as long as we said that sinner's prayer, as long as we go down and get baptized, as long as we, you know, come to church and, and give tithe and we do this, and we have our Ph.D. in God. We have reached that goal, and we don't need to do anything anymore. We have the gold medal uh, of, of the competition. And it's so easy not to grow. When I was a kid, I heard this story about six blind men walked into the woods, and they found an elephant. And these six blind men start touching different parts of the, I think a lot of you have heard this, uh, touch different parts of the elephant. And they, 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 they touched the elephant, and they came to a realization, a conclusion, saying, I know what an elephant is. Because one guy touched the, the leg of the elephant and he thought it was a trunk of the tree. One guy uh, touched, the, touched the, the, the trunk of the elephant and he thought it was a branch. And other guys touched different parts and they describe and they come to a, a, a realization, I've got it, I've got it. This is what an elephant is. And a lot of times, that's exactly how Christians, and sometimes even me, I come to a point where it says, look, I've studied the Bible. I went to seminary. I mean, I've spent my years, uh, you know, studying the Bible. I, I, I think I know who Christ is. I think I know the basic Christian theology. But you know what? I've learned more going through pain in my life. I've learned more about Christ in my suffering. So for me to come here to church, and this is exactly what church is, there are blind people who sit in there describing who God is to them, to one another. 
I mean, the fellowship after church, church sermons, worship is all good. But the fellowship after the service, sitting down and having fellowship in Christ, describing who God is and learning who God is to each one of us and growing and in knowledge and experience of God. Whew. That's exactly what Apostle Paul is referring to. I have not already obtained it all. I have not arrived at my goal. I still continue to press on to take hold of it which Christ Jesus took hold for me. I do not consider myself to yet to have taken hold of it. So Apostle Paul, after he, he exclaimed and, and, you know, show his weaknesses and show his faults. And, you know, one of the things that, that really hit home for me from this Bible verse is, is the relationship with me and my wife. Now, uh, just some of you may know uh, my wife. Her name is Gift. I've dated her for 12 years. And some of you, American goes, oh, 12 years, that's so long. But, you know, for Asians, 12 years of dating is, is normal. And, and we, I've, I've dated for a long time, and I felt like, I felt like, I came to the point of dating, and I go, I think I know you pretty well. Gift, I think I know you pretty well. It came to a point when I pick up the phone and I hear her voice, hello, and I realize that that's not going to be a good conversation. Because I, I hear that underlying tone and I realize it's, it's not a good day for her. So I slow down my temple, uh, temper and, and, and I start, start um, you know, being polite and nice and because I felt like I knew her. After 13 years of marriage, 12 years of dating, 13 years of marriage, whew, I can exclaim, I can sit here. I have not yet obtained the knowledge of my wife. I'm still growing in my relationship. I mean, there are things that surprises me even till today, this morning. There are things that she said, there are things that she did, that I just go, what? And I grow in my relationship. But see, as a, as a premarital counselor, I tell the people who comes into my office and I, and I give counseling to them, I said, you have to work hard toward your relationship. You can't just let it grow. It doesn't grow naturally. It's not, it's not an organism. Relationship takes effort. And so Apostle Paul is saying, you know what? I've done all that I can do, and I am still growing. And he came to a point, and this morning, this is the heart of the message. He says, brother and sister, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, this is what he did, and we should, we should actually listen and take notes. First thing, I should forget what is behind. You and I, we cannot live in the past for our relationship with God to continue. We cannot continue to live in, in our past values, in our past lifestyle. We cannot live in, in the past uh, decisions that we made. We have to move on. And we, have, we can't be stalling because of the past. You know, it, it, I, I cannot date my wife by talking about my ex-girlfriend. Oh, you know what? That restaurant, I went with my ex-girl, and I continue to talk about my ex-girl. I cannot. The relationship would break down. And Apostle Paul is saying that, you know, all of us, good or bad, we have experiences in the past. And you and I, were sitting here, we have good experiences. And a lot of you cling to those experiences. Oh, you know what? Ten years ago, God did this. Twenty years ago, I gave my life. And, and, and we gave that testimony often and often, many times, and we, we held on to that alter reality. Forget about the past. I mean, don't, don't forget like forget it. But you have to move on. 
A lot of you sitting here with, with painful memories. A lot of you are sitting here with scars in your life. People that have done wrong to you. People that have disappointed you. People that have ruined your life. And people that have affected you in a negative way. But you know what? Apostle Paul saying, you can't grow to be more like Christ if you have not let go of those things. Christ came to die for you. He forgave you. He cleansed you. Now, go and sin no more. Can I get an amen? Right? A lot of us have to get off and throw away those chains. And Apostle Paul's writing when he was chained. He's saying, let go of those things that hold you and move on. And start growing and start learning and start becoming more like Christ. The second thing he asked Christians and the believers to do is to strain toward what is ahead. To strain toward what is ahead. I mean, the, the verb gives you a picture of a runner in Olympic who leans ahead to reach something. Can you imagine people that run like this? Can you imagine people that runs with a straight, you know. No, you can't. The only way to move forward is to lean forward and just go, take off. And a lot of us in our lives, we do not lean because it's comfortable standing right here. We do not put effort into leaning. We don't strain ourselves to grow in relationship. I remember in all the relationships, the first couple of years in every relationship t seems to have the, that spark, right? For those of you who have been married, please nod. That's right. That's right. The first, year is called the first couple of years is called the honeymoon stage. And so everything is, you know, it's rosy and, ro and, and it smells good and, you know, come home. and Everything is nice. Remember the relationship that you have when you first gave your life to God? I mean, devotion, oh man, coffee, um, you woke up with the alarm, you were there, God was speaking, I mean. If you don't put effort into relationship, the relationship dies. It's like you're standing on a, a going down escalator. Have you done that? In the shopping mall, my, my kids like to run up on the escalator when it's running down, and people looking at them like, don't you guys have parents? And I'm standing there and go, I do have, you know, that's my kid, and I'm trying to get them. But they're running. They have to put effort into going up. If you stand still in any relationship, it breaks, it comes down. And the Apostle Paul is saying, you have to strain yourself. You have to sacrifice something. You have to die to something. You have to let go of something. And you have to move and push. Growth is intentional. You don't become a doctor by not doing anything. You put yourselves into study. My dad had a PhD and he didn't know how to write. He was doing his PhD dissertation on a typewriter. I mean, you know how hard that is? So, so to, for someone to be, a, you know, an athlete, Olympic athlete, you have to work hard. So here's what Apostle Paul is trying to say. He said, when you strain yourself toward a goal, make time for God in your schedule. Make time. Not find time. Make time. Make time yourself for Bible reading. Plan your schedule around times of prayer. Make worship and service in the church a priority in your schedule. Doing regular and honest evaluation, having spiritual accountability, those things are not, you know, it's, it's not a, a preaching topic. A lot of times it's just, you know, underlying statement that you should know how to grow. But this morning I have to say, if you want to grow, if you want to be intentional to be more like Christ, you have to do it. So the first thing, 
is let go of the things that hold you in the past, strain yourself, and then number three, I press on toward the goal. Sometimes you and I, we give up on our goals so easily. How many of you have many diaries that you started on January 1 and it didn't go through the 15th day of January, right? A lot of times our, 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 our goal, New Year's resolution or whatever, um, Apostle Paul is saying, once you set that goal to be more like Christ, I mean, Apostle Paul is saying, I want to know Him. So that is the goal. And sometimes we give up our goal. Um, in relationship, you know, the seven-year itch, uh, after you've been married for seven years, the seven years, then you start slowing down, your goals start dying. I promised myself when I got married, I said, I'm going to, in, in, in Thai it's called deep. I don't know, in English it's called to hit on my wife, uh, to, to deep, to sort of like um, woo her. After I get married, I will woo her every day. That's hard, man. That's really hard. I mean, think about buying flowers, writing cards, and to woo her every... But for us, to set a goal in our lives, if we're not careful, our relationship with God will stall. You and I, we need to grow. If we don't grow, we die spiritually. I love this quote from this one man, he says, I will come again, and I will conquer you, because as mountain, you can't grow, but I can. Sir Edmund Hillary climbed Mount Everest many times, and he failed. He went on expedition, and he failed, but he promised. He looked at Mount Everest and said, one day I'm going to come back, and I'm going to conquer you. Mountains can't grow, but I can. What is your spiritual goal? What is your life goal? I hope it's the same as Apostle Paul. Is that after you leave today, after you walk out that door, after you, you know, go home and go throughout your week, that you start doing these three things. Evaluate yourself if you have anything that hinders you from growing. And ask God to cleanse you and let go. Lean and put effort into growing. And do not give up. I pray that the Word of God will bless you in your spiritual walk. And I hope that you and I, we will grow as individual and as church. May God bless His Word.